Hey everybody, welcome back. I got a little bit of a special for you. It's a kind of a repeat of my last video, which was the four battles in the USA.0 lineup with a 30% uh, research booster. This is uh, five battles, although four of them, again, are good with a Soviet 6.3 lineup and a 30% research booster. And you'll see which battle. It'll be the really short one. It's the one that's not good. Um, up until then, for this battle, I didn't trim down any of the travel time. And uh, you'll see here in a minute when we get up to it, uh, it's not too, but there wasn't too much to trim down. I did trim a bit of the travel times out of the rest of the battles, however. And I had a little bit of feedback in the last battle about leaving the travel times in there so you can see kind of the approach I take and stuff to the battle. And I understand that, but I'll just show you that uh, this battle well, I'll not show you, tell you, that this battle, before I trimmed all the times out of it, was 58 and a half minutes long. So, or this video, rather. So you can see how long the video ended up being and see how much time I trimmed out just based on travel times alone. So, I was pretty sure when I started, when I started uh, the editing process, I was pretty sure I was going to end up trimming a lot of it out, and I did. And I think it's, I think it's worth it. It's just, it's just basically, I don't want to upload two and a half hour long videos. So getting to this battle here, decided to uh, set up kind of a defensive position here initially and uh, just wait for people sneaking up to A. They can get up to A from a couple of different places where I can't see them from right here, but I can tell when they get to A and then I'm very close to A myself right around this corner here. So it's a pretty good spot to uh, set up initially and wait and see what happens. And uh, first, first kill happens up there. I, I couldn't see where the Tiger 2 was. But that M18 could see him. Roger that. Now that was a super Hellcat, so it was an M18 with a 90 mil gun. So he probably got to a good position pretty quickly. And then had a big old gun to shoot. And then when this M26 goes driving by without taking any fire or anything, there's my position here has become irrelevant. So I'll move up to actual A and kind of watch down from the hill up here where A is. Now I'm using the Su-122P here, which is the premium 6.3 vehicle, and I also have a talisman on it, so I get a humongous research boost. First customer comes driving along. Thought for sure I had a kill shot on the first shot here, but I did enough turret damage and injuries to his turret crew that I was able to take the time to reload. The reload is not terribly fast in this vehicle, and I haven't uh, boosted up my crew stats all the way either. Second shot is the first kill. And at this point, I'm just excited I got a kill at all because I was using a 30% research booster and second customer comes along. I'm kind of surprised he didn't see or hear me shoot. But he's not looking at me. And I get a lovely shot just under, just under his upper armor and just over his tracks to get a kill shot and one shot on him. And I've got two kills already that just that quickly. Very happy. Ordinarily, this would be a good enough acceptable match with a 30% research boost for me. So I was really, really happy about that. Come down here to kind of watch and see if I can't give a little gun support to our guys moving in to capture the B point. And suddenly, wait, what do you mean the hostile team is capturing A? I'm at A. What do you mean they're capturing A? Oh, it's this guy right here. It's actually a good thing I had moved out of A or he would have known I was in the A point and uh, as soon as he got to it, he would have known I was there. Turns out it's a Yag Panther. Turns out he's got a lovely side side profile to me. So now I've got three kills and I'm about to get a zone capture too. Very good battle for a 30% research boost so far. Very nice. Although somehow I only have 900 points for score with three kills and a capture. Now as I come over here and peek over this hill, I'm just in time to see this guy fire. Get what I would call a very lucky shot on him because I should have aimed that higher. But still, it went through all of his side skirt armor and everything and got another kill shot in his engine. For the fourth kill of the battle. 
sit up here for a minute and watch for him, any uh, wingmen he might have or flankers out alongside of him. There isn't anybody moving. There's nothing shooting, nothing obvious up there. So I still figure that on the mini-map you can see a couple of customers down there to my uh, lower left. There's not that many enemies left on the other team, really, so they're getting... They're not totally wiped out, but they're getting a little bit thinned out in their numbers, so... Our team's got a pretty good grip on B, so I'm going to move back over here and continue my defensive A. Now, somebody is taking hits up here and firing back. So while I can't see them, I'll fire what is kind of a, an exploratory shot here in a moment, trying to hit them with some shrapnel and highlight them for our team. And that's what that shot was. I couldn't see any enemies there. I didn't know where anybody, if anybody was actually there. Tried to, tried to just hit somebody with shrapnel and light them up. Now I could see that guy right there who just got hit moving. He was the first guy I saw, and then I saw this tiger here off to the left. And right as I just get reloaded, he starts moving. And then this was purely a lucky shot, really, that it hit the front in the front side of his uh, turret face there, his mantlet, and went through and blew up and killed him too. Pretty crazy. I had a couple of lucky shots there for sure in this battle. And in a moment, you'll see just how lucky I was in this battle that I had teammates in the places that I had the teammates. I'm zoomed in trying to give some overwatch to my buddies who are moving up along the ridge line there. And then check, check back over here to the 3 o'clock position. Looking for any enemies who might be moving into position to shoot at our guys capping B or moving in to try to stop our guys from taking B. Swing back around here, and suddenly, oh boy, holy gun depression. Not good. Very not good. So I tried to do a little whiplash effect here. As soon as I drove forward and went to hit the brakes to yank the gun barrel downwards, he hit my gun, gun and when I fired, it blew the barrel off. That's an extremely precarious position, of course. So I'm going to be spamming the help button here because I'm pretty much I'm done, and they're going to be in moving in on A in a moment. Astonishingly, though, I don't know what happened there. He got my commander, but that was it. And then for some reason, he decides to drive past me and not shoot me anymore. Okay, he shoots and misses. Gets my driver, but he's not doing any, like, real severe damage to me. I mean, he is knocking my... Oh, I just realized I'm down to one crew. I never noticed that until the replay just now. I was down to one crew member there. I didn't know you could get down to, I guess if you're inside a capture or a, a zone and you get down to one crew member, you can still survive. I didn't know that. Huh. Well, at any rate, he moves past me. After I told the team what was up here, he moves past me and uh, just when I thought I was going to be safe, he turns around to try and finish me off. Gets a shot that I don't know if it went through or bounced off. You'll see a, a hit, hit marker on the uh, tank later. And there, a T-29 has just knocked him out for me. I was able to get my second crew member back in my vehicle here. Definitely very lucky that my teammates came and knocked that Noshorn off for me or I was done. We certainly would have been able to capture B long before he would have captured A and we still would have won the battle regardless, but it was a big lucky streak for me because I actually survived the battle. And I was done otherwise. So that pretty much wraps up this battle. I've got four more to bring you in this video, so don't go away yet. The light forces have captured a zone. But that was the first battle, and this battle alone in and of itself probably would have been a decent little video just for a little short one. But thankfully... Oh, and it was the T-29 Sabotage who got the Nazhorn, so credit where credit is due. I missed the uh, kill on him during the initial battle. There he is. Good work, first team. We'll 
get the scores here. We'll move on to the second part. Not bad for a premium tank. So 89-47 research in the first battle. That's not bad at all for five kills and a capture. It's nice having the Su-122P with a premium account and with a talisman, that's for sure. So for the second battle, here's a little bit, a little bit of travel time trimmed out. Heading in for conquest on Fields of Normandy, moving in towards the A point, and you can see most of our team is flanking. It's just myself and my random squad mate who are heading in towards A. Now, background info. I use a 60-inch TV as my computer monitor for my desktop, and that's what I was playing on when I was playing this. So I can actually see guys way back there in the background there moving. It's probably a lot harder for you guys to see if you're not watching on a gigantic screen like I play on. Though I did blow my shot here because I way underestimated the range, but if you look off to the left there where I just switched the aim to, there were multiple Tigers and Panthers driving around back there, and there's some machine gun fire too, but... I decided to hold off on moving towards A because I would be vulnerable from the side. And I'm gonna stay here and just provide some flanking fire. Including a completely random hit on this guy. That was an absolute guesstimation shot and just happened to get a kill on him, which I couldn't believe when it happened. Now he was a Tiger 1, a Tiger E, not a Tiger 2, but still, just the same. Can't see anybody moving after that shot. Debated moving in to help defend at A and decided to continue over here. I was going to hole up right here in this little bit of a hill, but the gun depression on this uh, Su-122P is pretty much the same as every other Russian vehicle around this time frame, which is to say it has none. So I decided instead I'm going to move up and uh, fire some flanking support shots on these guys to the south so that hopefully if we take out most of their enemies, they'll come and join us at A and help us capture that was the plan, anyway. Not sure if there was exactly a shot at me. I don't believe it was, but... Get a ricochet off the front of that Tiger II there. And good thing I backed up. I don't, still don't think he was actually shooting at me there, but a shot went past. Either he wasn't shooting at me or he shot at me and I was able to screen myself with the bush there that I'm hiding behind. Wait for my tank to reload get back into position and still see that he's there adjust my fire slightly raise my aim up make sure I'm not dropping below this time good effects this time right through the track and then through his bow gunner I'm starting to take some take a machine gun fire from the right which I know is enemies at a as they've taken out my squad mate in the Su-100 there decide to chance it get a second shot in which ends up being a kill shot I'm taking machine gun fire to mark me Take another hit from a guy up here. I can see where the shot came from, and right as I zoom in, there he is, dead in my dead in my sights. I start laughing because he blew his shot there, and then I promptly turn around and do the exact same thing. As soon as I fired, I knew that was too low. Such a dumb move. Now the enemy artillery actually ends up helping me here. Because it kind of screens me out as I'm backing away. And just when I thought I'd survived a second shot from that Tiger, I take a shot through the breach, which leads me into having to repair. Now I can see that Panther up there in the middle, right as he fires and kills me. Wavered back and forth whether to come with the tank or not, and decided ultimately to come in in my year two. I can see this guy getting lit up here right outside our spawn was planning on coming in and bombing him, but I couldn't see exactly where he was, and then I could see this tank crossing the field up here. I've got a two second delay on my bomb, so lead him out ahead a little bit. Between the size of these bombs and how fast he was moving, there's no way he was going to survive that. My gunner gets a immediate one pass hit on this Ta-152, so I switched over into manual gunner mode and lit him up with my 20 mil cannon. He was able to set two fires on me, 
And I thought, well, that's it. I'm done. This is over. And then I realized, wait, I'm in a Soviet plane. The fires will go out. Both the fires will go out. No problem. Had the engine shut off, turn them back on. Unfortunately, engine number two is shot out and... Okay, we're not actually gonna survive this. Jettison the fuel load. Jettison the bombs. Turn off the cartwheel app. I said turn the cartwheel app off. That's a joke for those of you who don't live in America. Um, then I came back in my Panther and you'll see the guy off to the left who was completely just sitting inside our spawn, but unfortunately I didn't see him. So there we go. Come back in my B-25. I had a pretty premium lineup here for sure, no doubt. Trying to get my team to uh, come in and take over A, but the guy that we had there who just got killed had no gun and he wasn't trying to capture where he would have been able to repair. Drop off two of my thousand pound bombs. Unfortunately, the bomb nerf hits me pretty hard because it certainly didn't hit them very hard. Take some hits in an immediate pass from a B uh, BF 109K4. And on my desktop, I've switched over to use mouse and keyboard controls. I never used to. And for some reason, when I tried to uh, use the S key to pull back hard in a turn, it rolled my plane up and put it into a vertical climb instead of just rolling it over onto its side and pulling hard G's to come back around and bomb at A. I lost all my tail controls and everything, and that was it for this battle, too. Good shooting by the K4, though. All that was left was to uh, watch our team lose. But still, my second battle in a row with a first place for a 30% research boost. Only got about half as much research towards my C-12254 this time as I did, but still. Very good battle. I was pleased at the way this was going. This will be the uh, not-so-successful battle out of the five. I had four out of five good ones again, but unlike my uh, USA.0 lineup video, I decided to show you this one because it was so short it almost was irrelevant at how long it took anyway. I expected this to be a good battle. Domination on um, Berlin is usually actually a pretty good fight. Normally I'll go for C. This time I chose to go for A, just kind of because I was already oriented that way when I spawned. And unfortunately, our team did not really do anything about moving in towards capturing the capture points. I had a bit of bad luck with the shot I was able to take too, which you'll see here in a moment. So I can see multiple enemies moving in up there in front of me already, coming in to challenge at this point. You can see at least two of them as I'm driving up, so I know there's going to be contact, which is fine. I've got a 122mm gun with post-war ammo in it. There's the first guy back there, and then there's a second guy even closer right here. And I'm going to give him a nice little ambush shot, which hits the uh, gun and just barely yellows it out. So, yeah. That's going to be it. I already know. So, yeah. This will be the next battle. This is battle number four. I didn't even bother with the score report from battle number three. So, five and a half minutes of travel later from the spawn, because it's the second battle of LL Main, I'm finally arriving at the B point, and I'm the first person to arrive at a capture point, which is even worse. I'm not even in the fastest tank in the game. But I did drive a beeline straight, a beeline, ha, huh, for point B. To and get right to it to capture it. I like this capture point right here. You're pretty well camouflaged from enemy fire without them having to come around basically right in front of you or right behind you. Allied forces have captured a zone.
course, when you drive over a vehicle and explode it, it does a really good job of letting the enemy know where you are. But none of the enemies were actually here, so it didn't matter. And if you crush one, one civilian's car, you might as well crush two. I mean, if you're gonna have to file a report, you might as well make the report worth filing, right? <laughs> Cause all the collateral damage you can. Alright. So this is generally a very nice little uh, overwatch spot up here. The enemy is generally much more uh, engaged with your teammates out there who are out in front of me than they are to watching this point, and that's pretty much what usually happens here. It takes me a few ranging shots to uh, find the distance on these guys. That was actually... I was really kind of surprised at how close that one was. That almost hit him. And then when I moved and reoriented myself and everything, I completely threw off where my aim point was. I don't really know why I did that in the first place. I was much better off if I had just stayed where I was and adjusted my aim, especially since that panther is still just there shooting. Somebody cover me. Eventually, though, I do get the aim down right. The rest of the guys are focused in on where they're shooting, as well as I'm focused in right now on where I'm shooting, but I do see all these enemies out here. And even though I adjusted my gun slightly to the right, because the Su-122P at long distance always fires to the left, or at least mine does, I still missed to the left on that shot. Didn't counter-calculate quite as far as I should have. But with the next shot, I adjusted enough. Over distance that one just a little bit. Trying to cover my two guys up there at A from this tiger that's moving in on them from over the hill. And I don't think he has any idea he just got shot at by me. That shot that I fired at him should not have given away the position at all. And the Su-152 made extremely short work of him, as Su-152s will do with Tigers. So that's basically all the enemies I could see out there towards A. So I'm gonna move up a little closer to B and pretty much set up some stationary stationary defenses here, as well as somebody just called out a plane and there he is. So I'm gonna try to move into a triple A position here with my Su-122P, which is never ever going to work. Not without flak shells anyway, but it's worth a shot. And even if I don't actually hit him, if he sees my shot go by and I can distract him, that's not too bad. Someone had called out a panther rolling into B, and in a moment you'll see it was a good call out. Because even though we have basically five of us at B, including myself, I'm not just casting blame on everybody else, but there's basically five of us around B here. And yet, there's an enemy taking it. Now, B is the village, so it's pretty easy to sneak up and sneak around people and drive right past people and miss them. So a panther got killed here, but there's no message that says the enemy has stopped capturing the zone. And in fact, they have captured the zone, so that tells me there were more than one enemy here capturing B. And sure enough, there's a tiger. 
Now, somehow, I didn't quite kill his tank right there. It's kind of baffling to me, as that almost certainly should have been an explosive kill shot, but it didn't really matter. Because that most certainly was. So that's a little bit scary. A JU-87G with the 37mm gun pods, and he is not hanging around at low altitude at all where I can get a gunshot at him. Which was mighty unfortunate, because I would have sorely loved to have shot this guy down. He did a really good job with his JU-87, though. He did not hang about in the area very long at all. There was no chance at all whatsoever that that shot was going to hit, but I took it anyway more just out of reaction than anything. Now if this had been Call of Duty, I definitely would have killed him because that was clearly within the hitbox. The Call of Duty style hitbox. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you look at it, this is not Call of Duty. Personally, I say fortunately because I'd much rather actually have to hit something than just shoot within 10 feet of it and say, Oh, got him in the hitbox, that's a headshot, he's dead. I really used to enjoy the Call of Duty games, but they just got too arcadey hitboxy for me and I just stopped playing them. Attention to the Thought he was coming closer, he was, but he wasn't coming closer quickly enough. And he's turning around and going all over the place, so... And never mind, he is coming closer, so alright, we'll wait and take a shot at him. And right as I'm about to wait for him to come in, he makes a big turn, and... My only chance at ever hitting him there was going to be if he basically flew straight over me without making any maneuvers with this gun, so... I had to give up on my dreams of being a 122mm fly swatter. Gonna go back over and, uh sit here for a minute. There's obvious German AAA firing at my teammates. And then the enemy starts capturing A. So don't worry about the AAA. Not a threat to me, not a threat to A. I can see the Panther parked there at A. Under adjusted my shot just a little bit again. Not too much. It was really close. Let the team know there's a Panther on A and wait for my shot to reload. Now I'm waiting to see what my reload time was here, which didn't help my aim at all. But I still nearly hit him, overfired just a little bit. I just wanted to see what the reload time was on the 122P. Now I cut the uh, travel time there because it was just me driving all the way up to A, all the way across all those dunes and trying to hunt down that panther who got killed right as I got to him. So I cut about another four minutes of travel time out of this video, out of this part of the battle. I'm disappointed I fell to a second place here in this battle instead of my string of first places. But still, a very another very good battle for research. As you can see, in fact, the best battle so far out of them with 9,245 total research, and it was all towards my Su-12254 because I didn't die in the 122P again. And now for the fifth and final battle with the 30% research booster, and for those of you who managed to actually stay and watch the whole time, or if you skipped ahead I guess, congratulations because you have found what is the best battle out of the whole five. This one you'll see in the results is definitely the best, and that's why I didn't actually trim anything out of this one. So partially because you can see my uh, messages here. To the team. And you'll see that 
my little, we have a little bit of a dis debate on uh, tactics here. And I end up being right, so I will uh, just force all of you to, my ego demands that I must show everybody how smart I am. So you get to see, uh, the hill doesn't really matter at this point. A is all that matters in the conquest map. Because you can hide out and defend A and not be hit from the people up on the hill. So if the entire team goes up on the hill and one enemy drives down in A and captures it, you can still lose unless everyone gets killed. And I'm mostly kidding about my ego, but not all the way. So I get into A, I can see a panther coming up down that road there. Watch back and forth on the two most likely avenues of approach. It's it's hard to see the panther over there to the right, but he's there. I can see him on the giant screen. You can see him moving right now. Attention to the designated grid zone. I'm going to get A captured, and then I'm going to scoot forward into that little U of buildings there and set up a reverse point ambush on the other team once I deal with this panther who's coming who thankfully blew his first shot on me. So there's the first kill of the battle. And I love this spot right here. It's such a good spot for holding this... holding the center A point from this side of the map that I spawned on. Because you can basically guard anybody coming from this spot here, and you can hear anyone coming from the left, like this guy that I can hear right here on the other side of the wall. This is such a good defensive position. A stew comes by, and is quite quickly dispatched. The most dangerous thing here for me is me firing with the sound of this gun, and the very distinctive sound of the Soviet 122mm gun, and then having to wait for the reload. Like, for instance, that Hetzer gets past me. And somehow that Yeg Panther doesn't take a serious hit from me there. But then, at, and that Tiger also gets by me, but then stops. And allows me to uh, present him with a gift on behalf of the Soviet people. I don't actually get the kill on him, I just get the assist. But still. So I think this artillery was specifically against me, though it may have just been general artillery at the A point because it's being hotly contested. So the enemy has taken A from us now because the rest of our team is completely ignoring the capture point. Well, not completely ignoring it. They're not all completely ignoring it. I've got help here, but... Quite a lot of our team is just camped up on the hill. Once the panther moves into position where I can actually see him, I'm able to dispatch him for the third kill. And I'm still not in a very great spot to move across and recapture A. I can hear a whole bunch of enemies still off to my left, and I can't tell what's off to my right. And that guy down there is heading in for the spawn camp and just not contributing anything to our team. The point of this map and the objective is the A point. Spawn raping is something you do if you're going to do it at the very end of the battle. Until then, help the team actually capture the point. Now that's enemy air going over. And I've got all these guys just sitting around A. None of them are going into the point and capturing it. Took out the breaches on all four of that Warble Winds cannons. There's obviously a panther right here. I'm waiting on the panther, but then I actually am going to get reloaded just in time on the Warble Wind. And I'm able to take him out. Now, somehow this panther right here does not 
recognize where I am. More the luck for me. As I'm then able to reload and dispatch him quite quickly as well. In a moment. You'll see. It's still pretty easy. Decide to risk it on him. And then see this Ostwin here, which gave me a heart attack and a half because it could very, very easily shoot me through here. I thought he must have been damaged and wasn't shooting. And even though he's not moving at all, I thought he was repairing. I should have realized he wasn't. But thankfully, I didn't really pay any... Didn't pay any price for uh, having shot at him and wasted a shot there. Even though this uh, stirrer Emil over there that just killed our Striv really should have seen me and shot me too. But somehow the stirrer Emil was completely oblivious to me. So I'm moving in to shoot him and then a wild panther appears. So <laughs> dispatch another panther and the... Mr. Emil up there is still just camped and completely oblivious to all the shooting going on to his left. Or his right, rather. So, spend a few gut-wrenching seconds here waiting for the reload. And then finish him off for kill number seven of the battle. Along with an assist and a capture. And now, just as I finally am going to move in and start taking A back... No 190D9 comes in and puts an end to my rage of rage, rampaging destruction in my Su-122P. Come back in my Panther, and uh, I was hoping this was the D9 that had killed me, but it's at 109. 109s aren't too hard to hit when they're down low like that, particularly with the Panther machine gun, with any of the German machine guns because they're pretty rapid firing. I didn't actually recognize what was shooting me here. I can see it in the replay. It's obviously the 6-2. I couldn't tell what it was. Remember, I'm driving the uh, premium Russian Panther here, so don't be confused why I'm shooting at Germans. The 6-2 gets away from me and promptly, apparently, just totally forgets about me and just starts shooting at my teammates down there. Don't really know why. I guess out of sight, out of mind. He couldn't see me and forgot about me or just got oversaturated with the amount of targets he had to shoot at. Somehow I'm able to take a fire here and continue driving forward enough to where I can see him. Able to knock out his crew inside the cab of his truck. I thought I'd taken a hit from back here. It turns out I think the hit was actually from my right because of my broken, or from my left rather, because of my broken track on the left side of my tank. For the most part, their team is just in planes now. And now I can tell that I actually took, I finally saw where the hit came from there. I can't tell where the guy is who's hitting me, but I can tell that I took a hit from the, in the left side again. Still unable to locate where I'm actually getting hit from. And eventually, finally he fires where I can see him. I can't actually see where I'm taking the hits from. I think he shot and then backed away there. Because even my spotting machine gun rounds don't light anything up for me either. I'm trying to blow up these oil tanks here to... Uh, throw up some smoke so he won't be able to hit, see me and hit me again until I can finish repairing. Still not entirely sure what was shooting at me. Unless it was that, uh, it must have been that 470 right there who just got destroyed. Kind of, sort of just missed on the J87 and then he took care of the job for me with his bomb. And once my repairs are finished, I moved the heck out of the way because I still I still didn't know what had been shooting me there or where it was hitting me from. I'm sure now that it was that Panzer 470 just up on the top of the hill here that this IS-2 had killed a moment ago. This will actually be the end of the uh, shooting in action. Unfortunately, there's just a little bit more that happens here.
more planes coming by that I was hoping to do a little skeet shooting at, but I ran out of time on them. And I'm pretty sure that uh, T-95 has just now arrived at the battle from the spawn at the beginning. I'm kidding. He was involved in the battle. It's just funny because the poor T-95s have such a hard time on so many maps. This being one of the better maps for them, really. You can pretty much get to the battle fairly quickly. Couldn't quite find the range on this guy. Pretty hard to track a. Uh, it's pretty hard to track an airplane with a non AAA German turret, especially a Panther. Panther turrets are not well known for their uh, speed and travel traverse. So as I was turning my tank around, I saw a AAA. I believe it was a Werblewind or an Oswin go by just getting out of sight just past the T-95. You could actually hear him shooting. It might actually be a Kugelblitz. But I waited for him. I was hoping he was going to come out here and then the battle ended and I never do see him. But eight targets destroyed, one assist, one capture of the zone, and only one death. Not too bad. Definitely the best out of the entire five battles and you can see that it's also reflected in the uh, research score towards my Su-122, so I made quite a bit of research progress on my Su-122-54 here. So thanks, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, I know it was kind of a repeat of the high-tier 30% research battle with my U.S. lineup, but it was just too good, it was too good to ignore when it happened again almost the very next day. Or it was the very next day after my, uh, after I released that video with the U.S. 8.0, so thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Don't forget to check out uh, the description and look at all my social media stuff. Check out those links and subscribe to them if you need to. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Friday should be uh, another first 10. Thanks for watching. Take care.